Welcome back once again as we make our way down into the depths of Shulva. I've just finished clearing through the beginning area of this sanctum here, and I'm ready to head on to a little bit of the later areas. I was really expecting that to be a bit more damage. It would seem that the Bastard Sword is really not the ideal weapon for that. Oh, let's also re-equip the Ring of Blades in order to get the full bonus out of that. Come on down here. Here we're going to face up against our old friend, the Jester, so... Everybody get ready for that. Really, this, this is one of the phantoms that makes me the saltiest in the game. get damage on him is he is he not gonna not gonna fight you know I've heard that he's been glitching on some characters but you know I didn't honestly believe it but he's just kind of rolling around this is strange okay now he's now he's ready Let's give him a chance to get a warmth off. Ow. Ow. That was weird. I mean, I feel kind of scummy for taking advantage of it, but... Considering this is a horrible encounter either way, I think it's not too unfair. Let's, let's get my great axe in here. <sighs> I should have just accepted it. I should have just accepted that they were going to give me the kill and just gone on with my life. No, I had to be fair, I had to give it a chance, and that's what I get, to be perfectly frank. Infinite stamina, infinite poise, jester. Lovely. Well then, let's just human ourselves right back on up so that... Uh, there we go. And grab our souls. Luckily, I did actually get the kill, so he's not going to invade again. And I can just head right on past his area. Let's see. Yep, the Great Axe is definitely the weapon you want to be backstabbing with. Kind of sad that I didn't get their gauntlets, but maybe if I was going to do a cosplay of them, it would be better just to use the uh, Hollow Soldier gauntlets rather than the Sanctum Knights, since... Uh, it would give me the poison damage bonus. Maybe run sort of a poison weapon. Who can say? Come right on through. This area I really like, but it can be tricky to clear properly. The enemies here have a tendency to fight as a group, which will absolutely devastate you. You really don't want to be fighting any more than one of these at a time. I, I'm going to go for the lighter but slightly weaker attacks of the Bastard Sword, just because having the stagger bonus of the Lion Great Axe is not worth the extra stamina cost and the slower s swing speed. There are also a lot of really nice drops around the area to pick up, but... I don't think any of them are going to come in too handy just yet. This attack... Oh, oh dear. Yep, see, now I've aggroed two of them. Now I need to book it. Oh dear. Things are going downhill quite quickly. Got that slow moving speed from the water. Everything is bad. Life is bad. Things are going wrong. Is the other one still coming after me? I don't think so. Their roar is your little warning that they've aggroed to you. So, oh, ouch. Yeah, I deserved that hit. There we go. Let's take care of that real quick, and now we can progress a little bit further in. Yeah, it looks like I managed to lose the aggro of the other one, if at all they aggroed. So, not quite sure what happened there, but I will take it. 
Don't want to get him pissed at me. Him, I do want to take on over here by the bonfire. In fact, I'm going to light the bonfire before I even... Oh, I was going to light the bonfire before I decided to actually take the aggro there, but no such luck. Taking a little bit of a risk fighting with his health, but I wanted to wait for him to get locked into an animation like that before I did, just to be safe, because I didn't want to trade the Estus. There we go. They do have really long animations, but if you get caught out trying to punish them when they're not already attacking, then it's quite easy to get caught. While they're in both their uh, actual grab bite attack and stamping their feet for that attack, they take incredibly reduced damage. It's one of the things that I really don't agree with that From did is uh, certain enemies on certain attacks that would make them vulnerable, they gave them hyper armor. Not hyper armor. May maybe hyper armor as well, but they gave them incredibly increased defensives for the attack, which makes it very difficult to play around since you can't really fight back during that time. All you can do is really just try and not get hit since you're not going to do any real amounts of damage back at them. But at the same time, th there's just nothing you can do to punish it. Uh, the only ideas that I have are bringing in poison weapons like poison throwing knives since poison buildup still works the same, but I still don't rate that since it can usually take so long and isn't something that you should be required to do. It makes sense on enemies while they're buffing, such as Smelter Demon, since it's just lo it's locking himself into an animation that's really not doing anything offensive. But with enemies like this, when they're doing their stamp, that's that's still they're still posing a threat to the player since they're actually attacking. They're basically just closing off your ability to fight back, which is very poor design in my opinion. You can fully roll through that jump attack, but it's very, very difficult. You have to time it really close to the actual impact in order for it to work. As you can see, it does 78 damage as opposed to, let's see, 326. And that's with the added counter damage on top of it, so... The damage reduction that that effect gives them is just insane. Lighting on this is just so weird, watching it come into play. It's very strange, but... I don't know, maybe it's just how they designed it. You can actually just see it creeping across the sand. Really silly. Use that dragon stone we picked up last episode. Tag this so that it comes up while we're grabbing our Drake Blood Greatsword. And that's actually a full round clear all the way to the first uh, bonfire. The systems of elevators here will take you all the way back up to the first bonfire or head you further into the Dragon Sanctum. Nice little elevator ride. It's a little bit slow, but it's okay. Here we are. I want to tag this since I want to be able to come back if I fall to the Drake Blood Knights, but I am planning on clearing all the way through to the final bonfire in this section before I actually rest up, so wish me luck. Hopefully the Drake Blood, not the Drake Blood, but the uh, Lion Great Axe will be able to one shot them on a parry since parrying is the best way I've found to actually clear them. Considering it is an, a uh, great axe, I could actually just... Oh, I tried to parry a jumping attack. Silly me, but great axes actually are one of the weapons that allow you to... Oh, goodness. I'm not used to the timings on this. I was using the buckler on another character, so it's a little bit different. Let's get the... Ah, oh, my goodness. They're just so agile, it's frustrating. Let's try this again. Oh, goodness. Why am I trying this? This is a terrible idea. 
Ow. Bollocks. Let's just try and get the black stab or just regular hits, since I think regular hits can stagger them. Would not appear so. Maybe this was a terrible idea. Maybe I deserve my fate. Let's use my last little bit of Estus. Oh, goodness. I just cannot parry that combo for some reason. But, the damage I deal in return is fantastic. That's him taken care of. I don't really have an ideal weapon for this scenario, so I'm actually going to leave those uh, crystal lizards where they lay for now. Get a life gem, just getting some of my health back, because I do have at least one more drake blood before the next bonfire. Let's see if I can do him right. Nope, 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 nope. It's, this is basically my last chance to redeem myself. Oh, goodness. No, 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 no. Oh, that is so worth it. Yes, yes. Now I can just take him out with my bow. That is how we're doing this. It's cheap, but it works. It's effective. Not to mention that at range, when they're not blocking, bows actually have a very nice stagger versus the Drake Bloods. It's kind of strange, considering arrows are such light weapons, but it's fairly effective. Now I can make my way to the bonfire, heal up, and hopefully get my bearings back and be able to parry them. Because at this point in the game, that, that is how I usually take them on, but apparently I was just not really managing it all too well. Started burning through life gems, which is just so abhorrent to me. Do I have anything to upgrade my SS flask with? I don't think I do. Let's try that again. I do have a lot of souls, but there we go. If you do have a lot of souls, you actually... What? What? The parry does, like, less damage than the backstab or the guard break. What is this? What is this? Highest risk, lowest reward? Oh, come now. Nope. Let's try that again. Can I guard break that? I can. Why would I not? I mean, it does more damage than the friggin' parry. At this point, I can just jumping it. Oh, come on. Don't interrupt me. It's not very nice. I can just jumping attack and take him down. Something that I often forget is to come on over here to grab the Drake Blood set, but I didn't forget this time, so that's always nice. Now we can make a few jumps on a cross. Even if you miss that jump, it's not a big deal since you still come right down to the same location either way. I am going to life gem because I want to save up as much Estus as possible for the boss fight down there. And now to clear this little hall of horrors. Bunch of... Oh, dear. There we go. I keep trying to parry them when I just should just be focusing on different strategies. Roll. Roll. Oh, nope. Didn't want to give it to me. He looks like he's stuck. I will take it. Oh dear. I can trade with him because I actually start attacking faster than he does. There we go. Last one left. They are guarding some really nice items that you want to pick up. Oh dear. Come on over. What I would really ow, like to do is get a roll backstab like that since look at how much damage that does. And now I'm fine with just taking him out with my bow. He is going full aggro though, so I took a little bit more damage than I probably should have. Adestus should be enough for the ensuing fight, but might not be so. Fingers crossed. I'm actually going to keep the Lion Great Axe equipped because I have a feeling it will do 
a little bit better versus the skeletons, and you really want to be able to take those out as soon as possible. Any sort of add she brings in can really mess up how you're facing the fight, so it's just something you really want to be able to shut down. Switch those to... Yeah, I'm fine with fire bombs being one. Let's bring in lightning resin. Grab that. Use my green blossoms. And we are a go. You want to manage your stamina as you come in so that you can swing the moment you're in range. That free damage is not to be underrated. Most of her spells can be just walked out of and leave her a little bit open for ah, counterattack. Let's see. I can get the one hit kill. That's good. Okay. That gives me the nice setup. And let's get you. Totally worth the trade. She's going to teleport, cast spells, and I take it all on the face. Ouch. That was suboptimal. Yeah, expected that. Luckily, in this game, staking a weapon on your back doesn't actually take off the buff. Which is so nice. Especially in encounters like this where you need... Oh, God. I keep taking that on the face. I can't do that. I'm having a hard time discerning whether she's going for that or the AoE, so... Oh, dear. That's not good. Totally worth. That was not. Ow. Okay, then. Mm. Well, I don't need to loot anything, so I can head right on down to the boss fight, but that was not a good fight. I really wish I had a faster weapon for that, but I don't, so I've got to take what I'm given. Human myself on up. Oh, my God. I'm usually much better at that, but for some reason, I the muscle memory is messing me up. Let's head right back on down and try that again. I have faith that I'll be able to make it work. Just dash right past these guys. Hop right on over. It doesn't matter if you make it or not. You're still falling the same distance. And you can make it all the way down here. Nice and simple. Let's try the Great Axe from the beginning. I know I wanted a faster weapon, but... Maybe something with a little bit more punch will be worth it. Tag my souls, because I don't want to lose that. That's quite a lot. Come on. There we go. Managed to dodge that for once. Oh, no, no, no. Fail stat, please. Ah, oh, ha, ha. This is bad. If she summons Velstat, you're gonna be in for a time of your life. I meant to roll that, but it didn't give... No! No, that wasn't Estes at all. Why would I do that? Ah, oh, I thought I'd switch to Estes, and I <laughs> apparently had my gold pine resin equipped. Don't forget to manage your hotbar, kids. That's just... Uh, that's a little bit painful. Luckily, I grabbed my souls, and I can try that from the beginning. But if she summons Velstat early like that, ugh, that can be really painful. Other than that, I was kind of happy with how the fight was going. I even managed to get some split damage on both her and Velstat while he was summoning, so that's the best way to handle that bit. Ooh, probably shouldn't have taken that fall. Let's life gem it up before we head on in. Pine resin, more blossom, and go in for round three. Third time is the charm, as they say, but, you know, great weapons, not so great versus Alana. Just something to remember, something to note. Let's 
swing, swing. I can get five hits before the fight even starts. It's always nice. It's kind of like how when you're fighting rain, you get a nice selection of hits at the very start. Oh, God. Why, why, Alana? What have I ever done to you? And she AoEs, which means I need to back it up. But that gives me some time with the Velstat. Pairing him is not the most worthwhile thing ever, but it can be very useful, especially since his AoEs are pretty ridiculous like that. Oh goodness, I almost forgot to switch to Estus again. That would have been the saddest I had ever been. Get out of there. And I think that's enough of Elstat for one boss fight. Oh, I will take that explosion, but it's totally worth it to get Elstat out of the way. Roll through a pair of those. She's been really nice to me. And I can now lay some damage into her. Oh, I just killed him! Would you stop, woman? Okay, that's it. I faced Velstat the first time. Now we're just going Alana mode. Thought I was out of range of... Oh, come on, with that three-hit combo. This is getting silly. Now I can heal all that up. Velstat, try and swing. Nope. Oh, and she's teleporting. This is just not even nice. This is the AoE. I could back that up. Nope. Tag her while she's vulnerable. No way, Jose. Ow. Still get some tags on her. I think fighting her at range for the rest of the fight might be the best idea. Just stay light on my feet. Keep kiting around. Just don't get hit. I can trade with her if she tries to sit still with her spells. Thought that was gonna miss. Two more arrows is the kill. No! Oh! Thought that was the kill shot for me. One more arrow? Do I get it? It's not the kill shot. But this is. Oh, Velstat? No, no, no. You stay away. Velstat actually gets that last little bit of the fight to try and pummel you with and that can just ruin your day if you actually manage to kill Alana and then get immediately smote. So I do want to have a look at this uh, relief while I'm here. I have heard some people try to say that this is a representation of sin and it just quite clearly is not. You can see that this is the exact same statue relief picture thing that can be found in the dragon shrine above the passageway to Dragonfang Villard's little chamber with the petrified dragon egg. And as you can see, the little stone outcroppings, the petrified dragon egg, and other actual dragons in the picture, one on either side of this, you can clearly see that this is a representation of the dragon Irie. This is not Shulva, this is not Sin. The monks at the bottom here are strange, after we've seen this iconography all over the elevators and side passages and chambers here in Sholva, but the rest of the picture quite clearly is the Dragon Irie, so whether Sholva was influenced by the culture that uh, was the creators of the Dragon Shrine, or whether this is kind of a meshing of the two. That's a little bit unclear, but I would highly, highly rate the former of the two ideas, especially since Sin being there's just, it, it doesn't fit with the rest of the picture. There's nothing in there to make you say that that's Sin, especially because it looks nothing like the poor Drake. Now is the time to spend your levels once you've gotten to these last two boss fights. Before you face Ilana, you've still got a lot of PvE to deal with, and so raising your soul memory by leaving the DLC and coming back may push some of the enemies out of range of your two shots or one shots. But if you manage to take it all 
on it once, then you don't have to deal with that at all. Wonderful! That's the full 2020. I can start getting my attunement up and start putting points into uh, fire, not fire, but int and faith to reach my dark potential. And a little bit of fire potential, too. And now we get to face the Drake in question himself. Dragon, I suppose. He, he is a dragon. I did misspeak, but... Sin is next up on the list. You you do want to have two weapons equipped for this fight, just because he has a uh, corrosion effect on when you hit him. So you want to be sure that you're not taking too much of that. Before you get into the middle there, you want to double buff. And th then you can... So long as you stand in the middle here, if you walk over to the side, he is... Unable to hit you, except for by landing on you, which you should have the wherewithal to avoid if you're paying attention. I got a little bit distracted by my phone binging, but I can come right back in there. Sticking to his hind legs is the best strategy. Occasionally he'll even rear up on his hind legs to try and breathe fire at you, at which point you can just deal so much damage to him since he's unable to hit you really. The sad thing is when he lands far away from you and then immediately heads back up into the air. There's very little you can do to punish that. You have to be close by to punish him for landing. And if he tries to start meleeing you, take that as an opportunity to get some free damage in on his crotch. Just hug his rear end and you should be okay. When he flies up, it gives you a nice opportunity to heal on up, get some preparation, regen your stamina. Most of his flying attacks can't hit you at all, as long as you're dodging properly. Always head to your left, his right, because that's how you're most likely to avoid getting hit. As you can see, my weapon is taking a ridiculous amount of damage from this fight, so I am going to switch now that my buff has run out. Come right on in and try and punish him for that. Oh, can't get the two shot, but the sprinting attack is good enough. He's gonna swoop me. Oh, should have been able to avoid that. Apparently not. Now is he gonna swoop? Oh, that... That attack is extremely difficult to dodge. I honestly don't know what they expect you to do about that if you're at range since if you are at range when he starts that up, you're basically guaranteed to get hit. I needed to get through that poison cloud in order to get behind and start damaging him. He does have the actual option to breathe between his legs, but when he does that, you can just chunk him really hard, so that's actually to your benefit if he tries that move. All in all, a very quick, very active fight and I clear it without a problem. Faint heat lingers in the Ancient Crown, and I can head back to the bonfire, having looted his room. It is funny that the final boss is actually less of a challenge than Ilana, once you have uh, sort of gotten the fight down, but I also think it speaks to, uh, whatchamacallit, how effective adding enemies to a boss fight is. A lot of people complain about that, but I honestly think that it works out pretty well. As you just saw, it's clearly effective for making the fight more difficult. Now we can head on back, and we're going to be making our way to the final boss fight of the DLC. Hopefully I'll be able to manage to clear all three in one go, but it doesn't look like time is going to allow for that. So I will make it to the next bonfire and cut the episode. I am trying to keep these nice and short for everybody. I said that I was going to keep that, but I, I noticed that I've been keeping them on the exact cusp of that. All of them are almost exactly 45 minutes, and so I really do want it to be a little in-between. 
come on through. It takes a little while, but it's a really short jaunt when it comes to enemies. There's only uh, eight on the entire road once you know where you're going. So you can come right on through. Ooh, that's the one we attack you don't want her to use since every other one can be easily dodged at range, but this one means that you can't immediately close in and cut her down. If she used any of her other attacks, you could just head right on in the moment you're finished with the other one, but if she uses that affinity lookalike, you do have to wait for the balls to proc before you go in, otherwise you you are taking a risk. And with Dark Souls, the game is about not taking a risk. Lots of dried roots. I still don't haven't really figured out a place for dried roots. I'll use one now just to show you how slowly they regenerate. But really, they are completely minuscule. There's very few times when a dried root's really going to be a, an effective method of healing yourself. It's just very slow, very worthless, to be honest. And now that a lot of self buffs no longer stack, you probably don't want to be wasting uh, your consumable self buff on a dried root rather than something like a burr or a, uh, whatchamacallit, green blossom. There's just very few times when it's actually a beneficial strategy to use a dried root, especially because of how prolific healing items have become in Dark Souls 2. There's just no reason to use it. But, you know, it's there, and they give you a ton of them, so... Who am I to complain? Worst comes to worst, I can just sell them to Gavlan. That's the Sanctum Shield. I really like that they gave you a uh, dual shield. It, all they need now is to give you a dedicated sorcery shield, but I don't actually think that's going to happen anytime soon. Rock Shield Balder. As I said before, great axes just make me so happy because of how effective they are at shutting down the infinite poise phantoms. Really, really great. Especially because this one is bad at blocking properly. You can just take him out really quickly. You might want to parry him, but I don't really find it worth it. Neither do I want to use this elevator to grab the drops on the way below, because heading through the boss chamber will actually lead you to the same exact location. So it's easier just to grab those at the end. Head back to Majula. Start increasing my magic stats some. And that's going to be it once I've actually spent these levels. Rather uh, action-packed episode. A lot of boss fights right there at the end, but they are joined together like that, so I suppose it makes sense. No point in having more attunement than I can actually use with spells, so... Hmm. Hmm... Now let's just keep them completely even. I do want it to be used for dark rather than miracles or sorceries, so I think that'll be the best choice. And that's it for the episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all next time.